Hi, welcome back. This is the calculable sub-additivity proof. And in this proof, I show that the probability of the union of many events is less than or equal to the sum of probabilities of all the events. So the proof states that for any collection of events, a1, a2, a n to a infinity, the probability of the union of these events is less than or equal to the sum of probabilities of those events. So probability of the union is never greater than the sum of probabilities of those events. And events can be independent or they could have some intersections, but the probability of the union is never greater than the sum of probabilities. Uh, if we have events that are independent, so these events don't intersect, the probability of the union of those events will be equal to the sum of probabilities. Otherwise, the probability of the union will be less than the sum of probabilities. So if events are independent, we will have the equal sign. And if events are not independent, then we have the less than sign. So suppose we have some events, A1, A2, AN, to infinity, so an infinite number of events. And let's define a new collection of events that is mutually exclusive, but accounts for all the events contained in our sequence of events. So we're trying to define the sequence of events A1, A2, A and A infinity by a mutually exclusive set of events. So mutually exclusive means that these events, two of these events cannot happen at the same time. So there's no, they don't intersect. So let's define the sequence B1, B2, Bn to B infinity. Let B1 equal A1. So B1 is the event A1. It has all the same elements as event A1. And let B2 be equal to A2 minus A1. So that is all the elements that are in event A2 but are not in A1. So you can see that uh, B1 intersects B2 is an empty set because if element is in B1, then at this element is in A1, but it's not in B2 because B2 we have A2 minus A1 so if X is in B1 X is not in B2 B1 and B2 are mutually exclusive so B2 can be seen as the new part of A2 the part that consists of elements which are in A2 but are not in A1 so here you see we have event A1 and A2 and they might have some intersection here. But now we define B1 equal to A1. So this is the event A1. And now let's take the part of A2 minus A1. So this is this part here. So these are the elements which are in A2 but are not in A1 and we define that as B2. And you can see that the un this is the union of A1, A2. So all the elements that are in either A1 and A2. So the union of A1, A2 equals to the union of B1 and B2. So from the diagram, we can see that, as I said, union of A1, A2 is equal to B1, B2, and we have B1 equal to A1, but B2 does not equal A2. So we said that B2 equals A2 minus A1, so that's without the intersection of A1 and A2. Also, since we had B1 equal A1 and B2 equal A2 minus A1, these events don't have any common elements, so the intersection of B1 and B2 is an empty set.
So let B3 equal to A3 minus the union of A1 and A2. So here we could have events A1, A2, A3. And this is the intersection of A1 and A2. And this is the union of A1 and A2, right? So let's define B3 as the elements which are in A3 but are not in the union of A1 and A2. So this is the part here. So again, you can see that the union of A1, A2, A3 is the same as union of B1, B2, B3, but B2 is not equal to A2 and B3 is not equal to A3. But we're still describing all the same elements. So as I said from the diagram, we can see that union of the A events is equal to the union of B events. And each B set can be seen as the new part of the corresponding A set. It's the set of all elements of the set A, AK, which are not contained in the previous A set. So it's the new part. So in general, let the event BK be equal to AK minus the union of all previous events. So K greater or equal to 3, because remember B1 just equals to A1, and B2 equals to A2 minus A1. So by definition, we have intersection of uh, BI and BJ for I not equal to J is an empty set because each event B is the new part. And we also have that the union of all the B events represents the same elements as the union of the A events, so these unions are equal. So if we take the union of all B events from 1 to infinity, we can conclude that they represent the same set of elements as the A events, so the unions are equal from 1 to infinity. So since we concluded that these unions are equal, they represent the same elements, we have that the probabilities are also equal because they represent the same elements, same events happening. So the probabilities of those events happening must be equal since those are the same events. And since events B are mutually exclusive, So as I said, BI intersection BJ is an anti set. Then remember the formula probability BI intersection BJ equals zero. Then probability of union of BI and BJ equals probability of BI plus probability of BJ. So probability of union of mutually exclusive events just equals the sum of probabilities. So the probability of union of A events, as we said, is equal to probability of the union of the B events. And since B events are mutually exclusive, it equals to the sum of probabilities of the B events. And we know that is less than or equal to the sum of probabilities of A events because each set B, B1 equal A1, B2 equal A2 minus A1, B3 equal A3 minus two union A1. So we have probability of B1 of not equal probability of A1. And for all the next probabilities, we have P of probability of BI is less or equal to probability of AI because the number of elements in B is always less than or equal to the number of elements in the corresponding A event. So the probability of less number of elements consisting of the same element, but just a subset of them has to be smaller. So that's how we can conclude that summation of all probabilities for B events is less than or equal to summation of all probabilities for A events. So we showed that the probability of a union of 
event is less than or equal to the summation of all probabilities of these events. 